It is Financial Literacy Month, and uh, we've already covered quite a bit of territory in the uh, in the first uh, in the first couple of segments, and we now will cover the fine topic, the lengthy topic of assets. Assets. So, for those who don't know what an asset is, you never know. Let's go Asset 101. Asset 101. Now, some people may just, honestly, I ask clients all the time, so tell me about your assets. They're like, no, don't have any. Exactly. I have no assets. I hear that actually quite a lot, quite Don. Quite a lot, yeah. And then I, then I start. I'm like, okay, do you own a vehicle? Yes. Do you have savings in the bank? Yes. Do you have an RRSP? Yes. Do you have a TFSA? Any other non-registered investments? Yes. So trust me. You may not own a home, yeah. but you certainly do have some assets. And, you know, I think knowing what's going on with your assets, I think is really important. And obviously right now, people that have their money in some financial markets, some consumers this year aren't doing too well. No. You know, I think going out of 2021, everyone was kind of living the high. Yep. I even thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? I'm doing pretty good at this. Yeah. I could probably do this and like do this as a career and just like live. Mm-hmm. Um, do what? Do what is a career? Like it's trade stocks and stuff. Oh, you can buy, right? buy, sell, and yeah. trade. Trust yeah. me, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a stockbroker. That this is not advice. Right. Um, but uh, I soon learned yeah. I'm not that good at this. No, and I'll have to be working another couple of years just due to what's happened yeah. here in 2022. Obviously, there's been you know some losses, and you know the markets are not as good as they were yeah. even a year ago. So. Uh, I think, you know, there's financial assets. Mm-hmm. So that's really what's going on maybe in your bank account, in your investment account. That's what we consider financial assets. Um, you know, another big, big asset that clients have, you know, obviously outside of their car, a lot of clients have an insurance policy that has a cash value. Yeah. You know what? And that, uh, in, you know, insurance policy certainly can be cashable if clients want. And sometimes clients use these insurance policy as, a, as an investment vehicle. Yeah. And uh, depending on, you know, your, obviously your financial position, sometimes clients can even leverage their, their, in, their uh, insurance yeah. Yeah. Uh, and securitize, you know, debt against it. Yeah. So um, there's obviously that. And, you know, the biggest asset that we really talk to customers about every day is their home. And the home is typically the biggest asset in a household. But it's maybe not the only big asset that clients have. We certainly have a lot of customers that have second homes, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, we're, we're, Cottages. We're, we're in cottage country here yeah. in Nova Scotia. Yeah. And I'm sure even some of our, our listeners in Ottawa do have second homes in Nova Scotia. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of customers also own rental properties. And uh, owning rental properties can be a great way at building your assets. Typically with a rental, you buy it, you have a mortgage, and uh, tenants pay rent and you pay down your mortgage, you know, maybe over 20, 25, 30, 30 years. And and that can certainly be a great asset that can appreciate as you pay down the debt and really someone else is paying down the debt. It can be a really good way at increasing your net worth somewhat passively. I know people, lots of people have that have rentals that the tenants don't even know you're the owner and they hire um, like property managers and stuff like that, Todd. It can be really a great way at you know, building assets, you know, over time. I don't know if there's any get rich quick scheme, to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, I think consumers that bought a house like prior 2019 and prior, they got pretty rich on paper, yeah. right? Yeah. Because the property values went up, they paid their mortgages down and their net worth increased, which means your asset, your net remaining asset has increased in many, many cases. And I'm talking just across this country. Right, right, right. What about things like boats and stuff like that? You know what? They're all assets. Yeah. And you know what? Boats and ATVs and motorcycles, yeah. they've, they've all become more valuable. Yeah. Cars have become more valuable. Todd, do you ever remember a time that like used cars are going up in value? It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. You know, my, my vehicle lease is actually up December 1st. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll probably will sell the vehicle or yeah. I'm going to extend the lease because I don't have a new vehicle to buy. There's right. not a lot of inventory still yeah. um, with that. But the price of the vehicle is worth more than uh, what the the residual is. Mm-hmm. That's not normal. No, we're in kind of a reverse uh, territory here, yeah. where vehicles are worth more, and in some cases they're going up in value. Right. It's yeah. the same thing with boats. It's the same yeah. thing with any of like um, leisure vehicles and stuff like that. Certainly worth more than they were, yeah. and 
Again, we're in a weird time. Yeah, what about land? Just straight up land's worth some some cash. I think land's worth a lot of cash. Yeah. And depending where the land is, the land really has appreciated as well. Mm -hmm. Just like, um, you know, real estate. I kind of consider land and, you know, if there's a property like with a structure on it, it's kind of the same in terms of like a real estate holding. I think land may may not appreciate as quickly. But again, it depends where that land is located. And it's really, we're in a game here of supply and demand. And right now, in many areas, the demand is higher than the supply, yeah. right? And that's yeah. why we've seen price increases. Now, I think we would be remiss to say that some people and some of our listeners, um, you know, in Ottawa and in Ontario, their assets have gone down for their real estate. And I think real estate is selling for less now in Ontario than it was. I heard uh, kind of at the peak of the price, the average home price in, in Ottawa was almost $900,000. Mm-hmm. And now... Some of the stats that I've heard, the average home price is now about seven hundred and fifty thousand. So, you know, you if if you bought a home at the peak, yeah. maybe it's worth a little bit less. Yeah. Or if you owned a home before and you're like, now my home has gone up in value, yep. it's now maybe gone down a little bit. And I think some consumers from across this country are feeling that and seeing that. Yeah. We're starting to see that a little bit in the appraisals, um, but maybe not as much here in Halifax and Atlantic Canada. We've never had the boom, you know. We've never had this like double digit growth. The last couple of years, yes, we had a lot of price increases, but our average house price here is still like under five hundred thousand. What about uh, with uh, with uh, of course Fiona and, and other events like that? Mm. Is, there, might there be some concern that some of this real estate that was we know that it's coveted waterfront and all of that stuff that, that it happened? Like look at Port of Bass. It at Port of Bass. So perhaps some people who may have been sitting on what they thought might have been a certain value might not be based on that what are you what are your thoughts on that? i would 100 percent agree with you yeah. um i know customers that are on on the ocean that now have had to put in like huge like seawalls and stuff to protect their right. property yeah and we're not talking like a 10 twenty thousand dollar fix we're talking like 100 200 thousand dollar fixes and in some cases you know some consumers and some homeowners have lost their home yeah. due to natural disasters yeah. like the hurricane yeah their homes are not there or they've been destroyed. And I think in a lot of these cases, they're not covered by insurance. Mm-hmm. And that's why provincial governments, federal governments kind of work together to put together a fund that, you know, people can access, um, you know, emergency yeah. relief. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that's certainly something that can can uh, have an impact. Um, my grandmother, her family actually owned uh, a hotel in Nova Scotia on the western shore and due to erosion the property isn't isn't there anymore yep and you know that was a long time ago so we're not talking about like anything that happened recently but during the um you know second world war they did some they removed some like rocks to build something and then the erosion happened and the property just eventually went away i mean it probably didn't happen in one year but there certainly are issues around erosion. And I think if you own property that is, you know, waterfront, right. that is certainly a, a yeah. valid concern. Yeah. And I guess the other side of it is, is that what might have been thought useless or not useless, but but um, real estate that didn't have a whole lot of value, suddenly a development goes near it or whatever it might be. And then a bunch it of employment be an impact. comes out. So, so you just don't know long term what could happen with assets, right? So that's yeah. something to look at. I think it's sometimes that's what's important when you're looking at buying a property as well. It There's that old adage, like buy the worst house in the best neighborhood because yeah. then that house is obviously going to appreciate as well. Um, and there was a, a real estate seminar that I used to kind of uh, would put on with a, a realtor and some other business partners. And they gave a really good adage. And there were two homes side by side. They looked identical. Mm-hmm. It's like what what home is worth, you know, more money, what, what home, what home is more valuable. And, you know, it was really zoomed in, you know, a house, little garage, little yard, everything like looks great. You zoom out and right in the backyard of this one house was like a commercial development. Right. So that house was not as valuable yeah. as the exact same house, but in a more residential area. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I think buying the worst house in the, in, on the best street sometimes can be can be really, really great because you can also improve your home. Mm-hmm. Really hard to change the location of your home. Yeah, though. that's right. Yeah. The location sometimes can take a really long time to genderfy sometimes, yeah. depending on like yeah. where you're at. Having amenities though, like uh, municipal water and all of that stuff, huge. That's, that's huge, isn't it? Huge. It's massive. Yeah. People don't put enough value in that, do they sometimes? 
some people really want to live on acreage. Some people right. really want to have well and septic. Yeah. Sometimes those properties are slightly more challenging to finance, just depending on like what lender, you know, you're going to. Yeah. And you also then need to maintain it. Your well may not last forever. Your septic might la- not last forever. And you need to do maintenance. The obviously downside of being on city services are you need to pay a bill. You, you got to pay for the water, right? And you need to make sure that your connection to the services is good. So there's pros and cons to both. Um, I would say definitely properties that are more valuable typically are hooked up to uh, city services. Yeah. Typically, like if you're looking at two side by side, something on city services would typically, you know, be uh, more expensive. Yeah. Asphalt, all that stuff, paved, all that, that's all part of the asset. Yeah, I think portfolio. those are all improvements that you can also do to your property. Right. Um, you know, and I think that's a really great way to increase your assets is by increasing the value of your home. Obviously, the market can be an impact, mm-hmm. but I think things like renovations can certainly be a big impact as well. Yeah. And there's certainly some renovations, Todd, that consumers do, and they like they double their money. Yeah. I think there's some renovations that consumers do that actually reduce the value, reduce the value of their home. So I think that's something to think about. You know, things like pools don't always add value. And I think sometimes when people do renovations, sometimes it also, if the quality uh, isn't as good, then, you know, that can certainly be an impact as well. 